Welcome everybody to Eye the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. Today's Pick a Card reading, we're taking a very deep journey into the dream time, drawing upon the ancient wisdom of the First Nations people here from Australia. So on the oldest country, landmass on earth with our, our original tribes, our original First Nations people, as I say, incredibly spiritual culture, incredibly... Uh, deep and and worthy of respect and and hearing the stories that they have from the dream time and so forth is very profound so i wanted to do a reading that drew on that wisdom using some decks that are designed by first nations people to to show and share some of their their beautiful artwork and their beautiful spirituality so this is a journey into the dream time for you to find what are the key messages you need at this point, what your journey is at this point from sort of almost the beginning point to the end, the alpha to the omega. What, do, what does the dream time want to show to you? And we'll basically look at it as an overarching theme, drill into it with tarot as I always do in readings, and then look at the process, the creative and transformative journey that is offered to you and what you can achieve from that that's basically the structure of the reading what i do want to say before we move into the pole choice is because this is drawing so much on the wisdom of our first nations people i really do want as part of this reading right now to acknowledge the the traditional landowners of the land on which i am now doing this reading which is where i live and so that is the gadigal people of the eora nation and I want to pay my respects to elders past, present and future. I also want to note that as part of the design of this, I have consciously determined that only decks that have either Australian creators or artists or both are going to be used in this. So this is an unashamedly Australian reading, though it will it will go beyond that because the dream time of course knows no sort of land or barriers so the the actual reading will be more universal but i just wanted to sort of like have a a kind of perfect circle of the energy and the creation within this particular reading okay so as always the important thing is to choose the right reading or readings you can go to more than one there certainly could be more than one dream time journey here for you that has messages and guidance that is important for you at the moment to help with it, I have basically shuffled and asked Spirit to show four cards, one for each pile. There will be others from this deck in each reading and from another deck drawing from First Nations Aboriginal Wisdom. So I don't know what else there is. So this is one element of the, the Dreamtime journey that we will be exploring. So that may, there may be something about the imagery or the wording that calls you, or you may go to particular numbers, whatever works for you. But for pile number one, we have Sound of Spirit. For pile number two, we have Sister Stories. For pile number three, we have Preparation. And for pile number four, we have Dreamtime Learning. So when you know what reading or readings you would like to go to, as always, I have the timestamps in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, part one, to your reading. So we have three Dreamtime cards to give us a sense about the sort of nature of the Dreamtime journey and the message and lessons that Spirit wants to talk to you about, and then also some kind of additional information around responses, sort of feelings that you might have going through this journey to consider. Now, the interesting thing about this is that there is a, a storyline up here, which and it kind of connects to mistake as feeling that you may have made a mistake or you may have got off course on something. But these first two cards have a kind of competitive, how are you going to make it in the world type of energy and, and what, what sort of way are you looking at what success is? And then there's a kind of a sharing energy for the third card, which I think then sort of starts to, to give a sense about what the energies are that Spirit is saying you may experience as you go through this. Because Sound of Spirit tells the story of trees that were competing to reach the sun. So it's a little bit like Icarus. And in the competition and the focus on that, they didn't take into account that great rain was coming. As a result, they didn't think about the fact that they had a role in protecting the flowers and so forth that were beneath them. That was part of their, their role or their responsibility. And they got so, so intent on that, that they didn't prepare 
to to do the protection. When the great rain came, the flowers died. The story about this is connecting back to understanding what your responsibilities are and how your actions and sometimes your competition impacts on others. And I think that connects over here to the forbidden area here because this card talks about how we decide what we can and can't do. And it's ultimate sort of thing around the possibilities up here as being the, the sort of shadow side of it, all the things we could do, and then deciding what ones are are available to us and what ones we shouldn't is how do our actions impact others. With Father of the Sky, it tells the story of a race between emu and kangaroo. And they raced and raced and raced and eventually sort of fell over in exhaustion, not having reached the finish line and not trying to not even being able to understand why. Why couldn't we reach the finish line? And when they look up to the sky, they see farther of the sky and they understand that everything is limitless, that there is no actual beginning and end. And as such, there is no capacity for a winner because it is all in flow. Therefore, they, they laugh and they call it a tie. So there's very much a sense here of maybe those who have come to this reading, you're in competition in a sense with others in some way. And our our world sets us up in competition. There's nothing actually wrong with it. This is not saying that it is wrong or even that it's a mistake to do that. But you are moving away from the joyful side. There is a, a sense with this card here because sad is its, its shadow is that you may be sort of feeling in the competition that others have got ahead of you or that you don't understand how the competition's running and you're losing some of your joy in it. This is saying the journey, there is no, it's limitless, you are limitless. So therefore take joy in the experience. I think I've mentioned it you know, in other readings that there's a movie I always remember, uh, I think it was called With Honours and it, and it had a sort of wise man talking to a, a young university student who was very competitive and he said, Something to the effect of winners don't think about winning the race. They just love to run. And so there's this sort of sense in it here of, of the same thing, that the joy could come in that. But it also comes in understanding how you help others or how, you know, in the, in the, the rush of the competition, you may harm others. And then we have inner quiet. And this actually talks about a rock and it talks about a rock sort of feeling in the harshness of the land that it sometimes gets very cold and and sometimes very warm but but it, it watches sort of like humanity you know watches watches humanity and the environment and the world grow and eventually one day a young boy comes to the rock and finds there's a hole in it which is effectively a cave and therefore sets up a a home for his family and as a result of that there are fires that are burning within the cave, which warms the rock. So that kind of reciprocity, providing shelter and support to others, brings you the warmth, brings you the joy, brings you the meaning. So I feel that this is saying that for the people who are in pile one, in this competitive world, there is enjoying the race, there is enjoying being who you are, and there is enjoying and understanding and connecting to help how we help others. And when we find that reciprocity, we become like kangaroo and emu, having a good laugh at ourselves at the fact that we were competing when in actual fact, we are limp limitless. So this is the message I think that the dream time wants to bring to you in whatever area in your life that you're operating at the moment. The only mistake that you could make the only time where you would get to something forbidden is where you let the competition overtake your joy and what you can bring to others. But otherwise, you should be just developing and being happy with the progress that you're doing because you are limitless. And and you, yes, somebody at this point might be slightly ahead of you, but you know what? In a week or two's time, that might shift. So this is about enjoying the experience rather than and how you can help others rather than worrying about who wins the race, basically. So I think that message is pretty clear and it's quite a beautiful message because it basically says you're on the right track and and all of that, you know, and you if you just kind of bring back to where your joy is, what you enjoy about doing it and, and how you can reciprocally work with others, then, then as I say, you become limitless. You can fly like this bird up to the sky. So let's ask Tarot for a little bit more information about this particular journey. So what details... Do you need to uncover in this journey what really needs to come to the surface
Okay. I do think that many of you may have a sense of injustice about competition, and you may be right. I mean, with the justice reversed, it may very well be that you are in some sort of a quote-unquote race or competition where, to some degree, the odds are stacked against you, where there are people who have an inside track, where people are favourites or something like that. That is possibly true. But what needs to be uncovered is that your sun, your energy, your vibrancy is still there. It's just a little bit muted by this, this at the moment. And with the four of stars reversed, there's a sense of like needing to come out, come out from that sort of energy, come out from behind the bricks, bring that energy forward. There's probably at least one person that there's a particular competition with, with the two of wands reversed. And there is a risk around this about getting caught in a clash of egos that could sacrifice a lot of what you do and it could delay you in some way. It's a bit like, as I say, you know, emu and kangaroo sort of race and race and race and then fell over with exhaustion. It, that slowed them down. When they realised that, that they were limitless, they could actually, and they didn't have to be in competition with each other, they could actually fly. So there's something about sacrificing a bit of that energy and sort of reworking out what it was that you wanted to do, who you wanted to be in the world. It gets you past the injustice. It gets you past that sense because it can't touch you anymore. Basically, if you uncover your own sun, if you uncover your spiritual guidance too with the hanged man and the capacity to sacrifice that which is not important to to help others and sacrifice that which is not important, you know, to let go of the ego and come out with the true sun, then, then you're in a, a situation where you can shine much more than you feel that you are at the moment. So this is uncovering a kind of a subtext of what's going on. You've got caught in, this is not fair, and it's true. It's not fair. That, that, that's actually true. But the point is that you can move past it, I think. That's what you're meant to uncover. So let's have a look at what energies or guides can help you do that. So this is interesting. This is basically saying in a way that you don't need many guides. We are going to look at some animal guides and so forth later on in the reading. But this is saying that that it's really it's really your heart that can can open this up and can shift that energy around the wheel of fortune and can let you let go of the disappointment. There's definitely been at least one person I'd say like a, a key relationship and it may be one that you need to move away from. It may be that it is not reconcilable. It may be that that competition is just going to stay and you need to accept it. Or it may be that you need to revive that and let go of the sense of where am I on the wheel of fortune. This is a, this is a very, very strong, very specific message. You, you have so much potential, but you need to let go of the idea of what it would be to be successful. And there's somebody involved in this. So it could be a love relationship, but it may just be you know, a relationship which has become about competition rather than about growth. And you've got to decide whether to keep it and, and make it emotionally fresh again or whether to accept that it was it's done its time, basically, and it's not helping either of you. So let's see what Spirit's advice is, therefore, for you. Because it does look like it's very much within you. I think this is why we got the inner quiet. That sort of like observational thing. There's the sense of the, the rock watching watching things develop and eventually finding the right collaborator. So it could be saying that you need to let go of the wrong ones to, to bring in the right one as well and be patient. But let's see Spirit's advice. So this is, this is getting back to the caring aspect, I think, because we have the empress. So I think there's a sort of sense here about what caring and nurturing can you bring to others and how is that going to, to actually make you feel again like you're the winner, like you're not in a competition. That looks like that brings in better emotional energy for you. But there will always be a little bit of competition. That's the nature of whatever you're in. So whether it's academic, whether it's career, whether it's creative, whether it's athletic, whatever it is, there always will be some. But if you start to look at this as a sharing collaborative energy 
and what you are doing for others, then you will get ahead of that race. Most of that stuff will seem petty. So Spirit just wants you to kind of lighten up about the competition aspect of it overall and say you, know, you can bring in abundance, you can be successful and you can do it with very deep and good relationships with others. But that's the key, understanding who the right people are, how you mutually help each other, how you mutually grow, but accepting that there will always be some competition and that that's okay. As long as you're still doing your responsibilities, you're connecting with the right people and you understand you're limitless, it's fine. Okay, so let's look at this as a creative journey, a creative process. So there's a number of elements I want to look at for your particular creative journey. So if we think of this as a creative journey of getting to that place where you love what you do, the competition is not bothering you anywhere near as much as it did, you are finding your right people, you are feeling limitless, what does that look like? So we're going to start firstly with a creative mandala card. For the beginning of the process, we're going to finish that part of the reading when we've gone through some other cards with a, a Omega, so Alpha and Omega of that creative journey to get a bit of a sense. So we're going to look at various elements. But firstly, the, the birth of creation, creation, what you can create coming out of this journey. Okay, well, that's interesting, a mess. So maybe that's where you have to start. You have to start right back at the beginning where everything was a bit messy, where where it wasn't sort of about who's where they are or so forth. It's like, I want to go back to first principles. I want to work out, and that's chaos really. And in a way, that's the beginning. That's the alpha. Alpha is chaos. It then eventually builds and grows over structure. So this definitely has a sense of a journey towards achieving something. So so that's a very positive energy creatively. It, it liberates you. So let's see what kind of magic you can... Oh, actually, no, before I do that, a couple of sort of guide guides around the creative process. Energy guides. So we have taste. And this says mindful eating, savour flavour, organic options. Okay, so this may be saying that you need to get back into your body to some degree. Yeah, and, and also it may be saying that Things are a matter of taste. It may be that that some of what's happening around the creative process for you is whether you're trying to fit in with what seems to be in the zeitgeist, what seems to be a particular group's taste. You think that's what has to happen. But this is like get back to what you really want to do because it's what's true to you that is what's going to make you limitless. And we also have focus. Flexible intention, regular practice, mindful persistence. Yeah, so once you've worked out where is your area of taste, what do you want to pursue, what 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 do you want to create out of this mess, there is a focus, a period of focus creatively for you. Let's give you some magic. Discomfort, okay. So this is saying that you need to be in a position of discomfort for a while. It almost looks like to, to really get back to why you love doing this, because I think maybe whatever this is, you've lost you've lost touch with why you wanted to do it. You know, the kangaroo and emu lost touch, the, the competition of the, the trees lost touch with their protective and creative area. You have to go through a period where you don't feel comfortable, where you're not sure. But that's where the limitless stuff happens. That's where the magic happens. Let's get you one other magic card. Release, yeah, and that allows the release. I actually feel that that feels so much like the energy of kangaroo and emu, getting to that discomfort, that uncomfortable thing where they just exhaust it, and then they have the release when they look to the sky and they realise that they're limitless. So your magic is about taking chaos and discomfort and then releasing that energy, having focused where you want to go, go with it. Let's see some ancient wisdom that you find along this dreamtime pathway and this creative process. Mahabet, I am you. Oh, Ma El Rosa, I am the sun and the moon. Okay, there are two things that this is saying. It is saying, firstly, that part of what you will do when you go through this process and you release and you understand the competition should be within rather than with others. It should be about how far you want to go rather than in comparison to others. You actually see how you are part of everybody and everybody is part of you that limitless sense. It's almost impossible to be truly competitive with others once you realize we're all part of the one thing. So there is a real connection that you can get. And I think coming from it, there may be a love relationship or a very strong partnership 
creatively, collaboratively, something like that with Ma El Rosa. The sun and the moon to me speaks of both the light and the dark, getting things into balance, alchemical wedding, all of those sort of things. So there is something very profound that you can create out of this, but it is partly through understanding that you are part of everything and everything is part of you. This is the limitless thing. If you get to that point, you will let go of some of this sort of sense of where do I sit comparatively because you become embraced by the all. Okay, so then let's have a look also at where might be some powerful places in the world. So this might necessarily be in Australia. This is this is just power places that might give you some idea about the journey and your possibilities. The Valley of the Kings. And the Obsidian Walls of Yellowstone. So this picks up Egypt and the USA. So some of you may have connections with that. So Egypt and the USA. But the interesting thing is that the Valley of the Kings is about transformation, about rebirth. And there certainly is an energy of this for you, like rebirthing your creativity right from chaos, right from the beginning, so that you recalibrate. But it's also about justice. So this is somehow to bring justice back, both for you, I think, and possibly for others. And then the obsidian walls of Yellowstone are being about being protected and protecting others. So there's definitely something here. In whatever this competition is, it's like in the middle of it, you lost sight of who you really are. And you are someone who is just and someone who is protective. And once you get back to that energy, back to those sorts of touchstones within the world, then you open up all the possibilities. It's a rebirth for you. So there is something profoundly protective and connective about you. For all that I feel that you've been caught in a rat race, basically, this is about getting back to the first principles, about being in, in right, right sort of service. Taking the, then you will not do the forbidden. You will not make the mistake. You will be in right service. You will protect others. You will see your limitlessness. And others will come to you to support you as well. So those, those places, as I say, could be, could be resonant for you. Or it could just be the energy that those cards are talking about that those places represent. We're also going to get you a couple of Australian wildlife guides. So guides that can help you get through this sort of chaotic energy through to the release and the rebirth. So we have the greater bilby, the dark night of the soul. Yeah, look, there's no escaping it for you, I think. There is definitely an energy in this where you have to get within and release some of this more toxic energy. You've definitely been in a toxic environment, and it may be that to some degree you have to stay in that environment, but you have to recalibrate how you operate within it so it doesn't affect you. So Greater Bilby is to take you through that bit, the ego death side of things that is required to get back to who you truly are. And we also have... Kangaroo, determination. It's funny that we had emu and kangaroo here and we have kangaroo here. You do need to be determined about this. Within yourself as well, I think. So the determination should be to be true to yourself and true to your vision and, and not get caught in this. It's just, I think you're just in this vortex of competition and it's almost impossible not to get caught in that when that's the environment you're in. But you are bigger than this, Pile One. This is the point. You have a a bigger role in whatever this is, creatively, work-wise, relationships, whatever it is. And it will bring very good relationships in when you get out of that, that energy. Let's see a couple of astrology cards for the stars to guide you as well. North Node, Life's Purpose, yeah. You have a bigger purpose. You have a bigger purpose, and this is to get you back on track for that. You, it just feels like you got off track. You missed the point. That was the mistake, and and it's not. It's beneath you to do that, and you will be able to rise above that and bring better connections in. You are heading in the right direction for your life's purpose, and this is part of it. And the eleventh house, friends. You will bring in good friends. Friends around you. And if some of this was around friends and there was competition, I think you can repair those relationships or you can find the friends that are right for you. So there is definitely something about connecting. For some of you also with the 11th house, it may be this competition has been online or in social media in some way. And that can certainly take 
the most you know reasoned and and well adjusted person off track sometimes so it may be a little bit of a, a sense here of of be careful about who you're connecting with online and making sure it's the right energies for you so to close out i want to use the wandering moon oracle and just find a an energy for the, the closing out we've started actually no i know what i should be doing as well i should be doing the creative mandala for the omega because we started with the alpha and then we need to finish with the omega so we started with the mess the chaos of creativity the creative energy at the end of this journey is support yeah you will find the support that you need you're not in the right environment now or you're dealing with people who make it more about a competition and you're getting pulled into that yourself but by going through this process recalibrating with who you are and being determined to do it and connect back to your life purpose, you're going to find the right friends, the right support. So as I say, we'll finish with the Wandering Moon Oracle to ask for a kind of a coda, a kind of a, a energy on the way out from the dream time for you, for this message. Hope. Yeah. Because you maybe were kind of at a point where you were losing hope, where you were feeling like the competition was everything, where things were unfair. And as I say, I think for many of you, they were. They were. There's something about the environment. But by understanding your limitlessness, understanding your role, recalibrating with your life purpose, and being prepared to go through that process of chaos into creation, you will find hope and you will find your limitlessness. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile One. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Other than that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile Two, to your reading. So these are the cards from the Aboriginal Dream Time, and these are the wisdom cards that, that come from another deck that I feel associate. And I think they associate very directly with each phase of this. And we are looking, I think, here at a journey or a message from the Dream Time that is about a kind of phase from feeling stuck into understanding cycles and understanding how to be happier in your life and how to use skills in a way and have the right people around you. The stories here, firstly, sister stories and connecting with suppressed energy where there is a suppression of what is new and what you kind of know underneath and what you would like to explore. This story tells of three sisters who were told frightening stories of a creature called the Yaoi. And one day one of the sisters fell down in a, in a gully. And when the other sisters found her, you know, to try and rescue her, they found her actually talking with the Yowie. And the Yowie was actually lonely and, and not at all frightening. And they could all become friends. So there is a sense in this story about have you got stuck in something predictable? Have you suppressed some of what you really know about yourself and about the world to, to follow what people tell you are the case or what you're kind of used to doing? There's an energy of sort of doing something different, awakening, like turning that around and getting awakening rather than feeling suppressed. There's something within your soul that, that yearns, I think, for the right connections as well. And this will come up with this energy. And this is a promise that those connections will come. But you need to think about what rut have you got caught in and, and how could you break out of that? And some of that is about learning skills because emotional exhaustion here tells the story of koala bear that originally used to always be on the ground and was trying to get to its eucalyptus eucalyptus tree leaves and it was hard because it was on the ground and it was emotionally exhausted and tired and not able to work out how to nourish itself and one day goanna comes and finds the koala and says look at your claws why don't you climb up the tree to get to your leaves and the koala said i don't know how to climb and so goanna taught the koala to climb and as a result now the koala is always up in the trees eating the leaves there so this is about learning a new skill coming out of a rut learning a new skill or opening up an ability you always had because the koala bear always had the claws but somebody giving you that idea it could be this reading it could be your guides it could be friends it could be anything but 
having that sort of like push along the way to become confident. Now, there is a little bit of a warning when you're moving from uncertainty to confidence around finding the right people to be around you because this card does talk about sometimes when you get very confident and very skilled at something, there can be jealousy. So there's always, I think, what the dream time is saying here is that you should be on this journey to discovery, but you should not let the reactions of those that get jealous stop you. When you are getting into the flow of who you are and what you can really do, you should move forward with confidence and and understand that you've always had these abilities and once you looked at things differently you could do it but I do think, think it's saying that for some of the people coming here that there might be people around you that like you to be stuck in a bit of a rut like you to be where you are in your career in your you know sort of domestic arrangements in your relationships whatever it is so there may be a bit of pushback, but that's not a reason not to do it because in the end, the koala did need to, to get to the eucalyptus trees. You do need to find the new things within you and find who you really are. And you will have people with you. Uh, there is sometimes some sorrow associated with if you find that some people fall away because they're not, they're not going to support the new you. But if you understand that that has had its phase and its time and let that go, you can bring forward and become delighted with the new people coming in. This story, Moon Phases, is about understanding that things happen in cycles and that there may be time periods where you're alone and time periods that you're with the right people. It tells the story of a wallaby that makes friends with an echidna. And they have a lovely time when they meet and it's on a particular in a particular place at night. And so Wallaby comes back every night after that looking for Echidna and Echidna is never there and sort of like, oh, was this friendship not what I thought? But, but Wallaby just keeps coming back and a month later the Echidna comes trotting along and they can have a lovely time together again. And Wallaby asks, why, why I've been here every night? Why aren't you here? And Echidna says, I come at particular phases of the moon. This is when I will be here. And so there is a sense here about there are people that will come at the right time. There are friendships and connections that will come at the right time. So if you get yourself out of this rut and you get a bit of a pushback and you need to let people go, do it with sorrow but not anger or upset. Just go, okay, that is what it is because the right people are going to come in. So I think this message is you're meant to bloom into who you were always meant to be, not to be held back by other people or even your own doubts about yourself and the right people are going to come to help you. So let's use tarot to get a little bit more information about what details are you going to uncover in this Dreamtime journey. Okay, there's a little bit of similarity in this to another reading, I have to say, and interestingly enough, that card came up literally in that same place. So some of you may have come to two readings, and there is a synergy between the two, I must say. What this is saying is that you, first of all, you're uncovering that you don't need to have battles with people, and you don't need to compete, and you don't need to be suppressed. That's not necessary, but there was maybe at least one pe person around who was wanting you where you were was wanting to limit what you would do in some way. So this could be a friend, it could be a boss, it could be a lover, it could be anything. It could be a parent. But there's there's an understanding. You, you start to see that, that that is not who you are and that is not that is not sort of it, it's a conflict that you need to come out of. So and if that means moving away from that person, that's something you need to do. Because what you're uncovering is your North Star. You're covering you're uncovering hope again. You're uncovering that understanding of who you are, and that will bring you recognition. It will bring you the right people. It will bring you victory. It will bring you recognition. So you are meant to move into confidence, even if, as I say, it actually jars some people around you. You are meant to do it because you are meant to find who you actually are. And this journey is just to give you a sense of what are the skills you've forgotten that you had or maybe even didn't know that you had? What are the fears you have that you don't need to have? And when will the right people come in? And when is it something you do yourself? And when is it something that you do in collaboration? So let's ask what energies or guides you meet or encounter on this journey to support you.
I think that you're going to come across someone else who's gone through a similar thing. Like on a kind of journey, meditative journey, or it may be in your life, there is someone who is going to, it's almost like maybe you see someone who's gone down this same path and you recognize what's happened with them and it's an aha moment. You become, I think you'll become good friends. But it's very interesting we have the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands reversed. I feel like you're going to come across someone who has either had the same thing with whoever this is. So if this is in a workplace, it could be a boss that's very dictatorial and there's someone else as an ally you find who, like you, has had this energy suppressed and hasn't felt that they could speak. And there's a lot of emotional fallout for this. For some of you, this is around family, I have to say. For some of you, this is this is patterns from your family and being held back, and you're going to start to understand that. But I just think you're going to find someone, as I say, either literally someone in life or someone like a guide on a meditative journey that shows you this pattern, shows you the pattern of silencing that occurred and how courage is necessary. You know, the courage to, to learn from Goanna, for instance, for instance, to be able to climb the tree and then have, have the eucalyptus leaves, you know, like the koala bear. But I think there's a very specific way that this is going to come to the surface for you, either, as I say, in a meditative energy with a guide coming in, but they're going to show you or you're going to see it happening to someone else and as a result, see the pattern for yourself. So let's also ask what Spirit's advice is to get the best out of this energy and this realisation. Okay, this is becoming clearer. So most of you, I think, are in an environment, a work environment, a family environment, a friendship circle, something like that, where, as I say, people liked you being suppressed. Whether they consciously thought, I want to suppress this person is another matter, but they liked the status quo. And there's a lot of secrets and a lot of sort of manipulation associated with this. Spirit says that that needs to come to the surface. And it, 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 Spirit is actually saying that you're very psychic, but it may in fact be working against you right now because it may be that you are too empathic with these people. Like let your empathy be for someone else who's going through something similar to you so you can see the pattern, but don't, don't kind of almost make excuses for the people around you. Don't try and always repair sort of like competitive or difficult relationships. It saps your strength. So, so there really is the suppression thing here and the use, the manipulation of fears to make you lack confidence. But there will be something you see, someone you help or that who helps you that will make you understand the skills that you have. But you have to kind of almost detach from the connection to these people, whoever they are. Now, sometimes that's easier said than done. If, if you're, it's in your family, it's easier said than done. It may just be going within to detach and understand the dynamics so it can't touch you so much, so that you're not always a kind of emotional support for people who are draining you on some level and who are causing sort of you know, disruption and, and a lack of harmony where they are. This is about you regaining your strength again and understanding the dynamics and who are the right people to be around you. So let's take you on the journey. We're going to start with the creative soul mandala for a creative energy at the beginning. We'll also use a card from this deck at the end of the journey. But it's just to sort of see various elements around the journey that will help you come to this realization and, and regain your strength. So firstly, the creative inspiration around this journey for you. Community. Okay, this is about finding the right people. You know, the, the creative starting point for you is who are the right people to be with? To because, to be frank, I don't think you're with the right people at the moment. And it may take a little bit of time and a bit of experimentation and understanding the phases and when you can find people to find them. But this is about finding your tribe, the tribe that allows you to grow, to reach the top of the tree, not to, not to sort of like always be supporting them and so forth. Okay, let's have a look at some creative energy around it for you. Power. Stand tall, honour your boundaries, core energy centres. Yeah, this is about you regaining your power, your strength. Understanding, as I say, that you can get to the top of the tree. Understanding you don't need to be afraid. And I think with that Yowie story, that it may well be people who are very different to the community or group you're in at the moment, and even ones that may be that group don't, don't approve of or think are, are problematic that will turn out to be the right people for you. We also have soften. 
Soften your hold, soothe with love, heartfelt acceptance. So I think this is this sorrowful energy. This is going okay. Like some people are going to stay in my life and that will work and, and that's great. But some I'm going to have to detach from and I just need to do that softly, gently, honorably, but, but allow that to occur. Let's get you some magic to help with this journey. Duties. Okay. So I think this is about understanding what are the right duties and what aren't because I just think that you're being held tight by other people's expectations. So what are, what's your true duty? Your true duty in the end is to yourself and to maximising what you do so that you can then be truly helpful to others and truly supportive to others as opposed to just within this hierarchical system that you seem to be in. So understanding what the true duties are I think is a magical process for you. Also, focus. Once you've done that, focusing on what you want, focusing like just like the koala would have focused on reaching the top of the tree, that's something you should be doing and it should be for you and finding your community, finding your people. Let's get you some ancient wisdom to help you along the way. Mahate, I am that I am. So this to me is getting in touch with your divine power. Getting, And it's interesting that we had power there. You have a lot. This is part of the reason, I think, that this is happening. You've been suppressed a bit because underneath you might be the scary one to them if you were actually coming into your power. But you do need to be yourself. You can only find your community if you understand who you are and what all your skills are and what all your powers are. You should explore it. I just think that some people are trying to tell you not to do that that it's egotistical or something like that and green the harmony of life so that's beautiful so that's the heart center that's getting back to your heart it's also the harmony of life is the cycles of life understanding that things will come in their time and to me it also looks like the tree of life understanding your connections to the the highest realms and so forth there may well be a connection between community and green there. You may be somebody who's into environmental causes or something like that. That may bring some of that connection in. That may work for some of you. Speaking of environment, I also want to get you a couple of places of power on the earth. So these aren't necessarily Australian. It could be anything, but the dream time is broader than just Australia. So this is just to see kind of touchstones. It could be places that, that draw to you. Or it could just be the energies of the places that are part of your journey and finding who you are and your talents and your community. So we have the magnetic North Pole. And we have the Tarkine. Okay, so that is that is Australian. That's in Tasmania. So some of you are very strongly connected to Australia, potentially into the dream time or may come from Australia. The magnetic North Pole to me is about, it is talking about being flexible and being consistent, but it's about being magnetic. It's saying that this energy will bring in your people. Once you start to really live into who you are, you will magnetically draw in the right people. And this is also a highly spiritual, highly electric, highly charged area. So this is, this is connecting to your divine purpose. That is a very powerful sort of energy in place for you. The Tarkine is about growth. And it's about knowing that sometimes growth is painful. Sometimes we have to separate from that that no longer serves us to find that which will. But And it is allowing you to be alone when you need to be and then connected when you need to be. So this is part of the process, the sort of sense of the wilderness and the, the wildlife and all that kind of thing to be connected to nature. And there is a very strong nature thing with you. So this is probably working on two levels. Your own nature is what you're meant to get in touch with and your own abilities. But I think, as I say, for some of you, there may be a very environmental or natural aspect to what you do. Speaking of nature, we want to get you a couple of uh, nature-based Australian spirit guides for you as well on this journey. So we have Little Penguin, self-mastery. Yeah, self-mastery. This is you learning what your skills are and doing it unashamedly. And if that and that will bring the right people in at the right time. And if it means others can't deal with it, then that's kind of their problem, Pol Two. It's not yours. You're meant to move forward into your mastery and Penguin will help you with that. And we also have Pygmy Possum, curiosity. Yeah, you just need to be curious. Don't, don't limit yourself. Don't think that your fears and what you've been told is enough. Be curious about what you can do. You're going to be surprised at your skills, just as Koala was surprised about the fact that they could get to the top of the tree. 
once they learnt to learn to climb. So we're also going to get you some stars, some astrology to guide you on the way as well. Aquarius, I know. So this is you getting in touch with your spiritual self. This is you getting in touch with the right community, you know, like on a transpersonal level. It also means that you need to think some of this through. There's a lot in this that feels earthy and of the heart, but I think it's also saying you need to sort of think it through. You need to find the philosophical understanding of what's going on and of who you are and of where you've been suppressed as well. And we also have... Water element sensing. Yeah, so it's a combination of your heart, the emotional energy connecting in the flow of the water, the change, but it's also in your mind. It's your heart and your mind. These are the two that need to unite. They might have been a little bit separate in a way. In fact, the environment you were in maybe made them a bit separate. You know, made it hard for you to be in touch with your heart because of a philosophical viewpoint. Liberating that and understanding who you are brings you into touch with that again. So then we come to the second of the creative soul mandala things, the, the alpha and then the omega, the, the outcome creative energy from this journey for you. Harmony, yeah. You're going to find your community. You are, and you're going to find the harmony that is, is lacking. It's just a matter of going by the pathway of what your skills are and owning who you are and not being worried about how people will respond to that. Okay, so to finalise, we're just going to draw a card from the, the Wisdom of the Wandering Moon Oracle to have a final outcome of this journey for you. Illusion. I think that you'll understand the illusion that you're under. This certainly doesn't, this isn't a journey of <clears throat> being deluded in any way. I think it's a journey of breaking out, breaking out of the, the constraints of that and understanding how much the, the limitations you put on yourself were an illusion. But it also may say that when you need to, you can you use your knowledge for a bit of an illusion so that you can manage the shifts and changes around the people around you if there is a pushback. So part two, this is all about you finding your true skills and not being limited anymore. And that will bring your community and your harmony in. Until you do that, you won't have that harmony. So it's very important to start to realise what you have in your kit bag and use it. And this journey was meant to show you that. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome to your reading pile three. So this is very powerful and interesting, I have to say. These cards are around the dream time journey and the themes of this reading for you in the journey that you're on in the dream time. This is some of the sort of emotions or impacts that you experience in association with it. You are people, I would say, who have gone through some grief of some sort. This card preparation, which was the card that possibly drew you to the reading, talks about that. It talks about where we feel a loss or where we feel something hasn't worked out or we've lost somebody or something like that. It is important to take the time to go through the grief and let it pass. So the, the First Nations people talk about sorry times and so that the sense of letting go of that, of being in the grief and being able to feel it so that you can move past it. Now, the reason that's important is that you have a big mission, I would say. And in doing it, you will find a sense of belonging. And there is a very key way of understanding what this mission is. Firstly, we have woman's wisdom here, which talks about a grandmother teaching her granddaughter about the ways of the tribe and the ways of herbal medicine and things like that. It is the sense of guidance from somebody who really can help you. So this is suggesting that someone is around you at the moment or some group of people who have wisdom, gifts and so forth to bring to you to help you, possibly to deal with whatever this grief is and let it go, but also to understand what your gifts are and what you will take forward because you have a very special place in a much bigger thing. Wondrous Opportunities talks about the beginning of time where all the animals were working out what they would do to contribute to the harmony and the natural order. And it talks about different ones wanting to do different things. Uh, and it gets to an ant, an ant's going, I don't really know what I do. I just kind of clean up debris. And the other animals say, the reality about this is that is incredibly important for the harmony and the well-being of the earth. 
So it is a sense of working in community and a sense of taking your particular skills and so forth in a collaborative effort of belonging. You may have felt abandoned. It may be that some of your sorrow was trying to connect with others before and not being accepted or having been left. It could have been a love relationship. It could have been not fitting in with your family. It could have been work. But this is about getting prepared for true belonging, for where you contribute on an incredible way because you are very concerned for the nature of the world, for something. It could be a political cause. It could be sort of relationships around you. It could be something in your work. It could be anything, but it could be the environment. It could be nature. But there is a deep sense of concern that you have and a deep sense of wisdom, your wisdom and the wisdom that others have. It is saying that you are meant to hear the counsel of others and find your role, but then to speak up on your own wisdom, to not fear that you are going to be abandoned again, that you are meant to be finding your people where they will really understand and cherish what you bring to the table. This is not just about them and it's not just about set roles and there is a real sense of recognition but it is because there is some deeper concern that your people and you are, are around and as I say that could be anything it could be sort of very macro political environmental it could be relationships it could be anything but this is a time for you to connect with other people and understand your intrinsic absolutely valuable beautiful role associated with that and to belong so it's a really lovely energy but it's a sense of a greater purpose than yourself which is what brings you your people so let's use tarot to get a little bit more information about what details are you uncovering on this journey So I think that many of you, it's been a crisis of faith in some way. It could be a crisis around a spiritual group, maybe an alternative spiritual group that didn't turn out to be walking the talk or something where you had to be careful what you said, where there were kind of rules and regulations around that and you had to fit in with a hierarchy in some way. It could also be sort of something traditional. It could be you know, being in an organization that was traditional, but you were a bit of a maverick and you had to, again, be careful. It could be also around study, that you have been studying things and so forth, but you felt like it isn't, it didn't sort of take you where you wanted it to go and your own wisdom wasn't allowed to be spoken in any way. There's definitely that sort of sense and a sense of like wanting to consolidate coming out of that to learn what you can out of that. And I do think there is, as I say, some wise counsel around you so that you can see what beauty you can bring to things and get past the exhaustion. There's a real sense of exhaustion. I think this is why that first card is saying you do need to be able to go into that grief stage and let that go. And somebody, I think, will help you, but I think they will also give you that guidance to then realize maybe there's something that went through whatever this battle was, I think, with established sort of forces that, that maybe kept your son undercover for a while and, and exhausted you just to sort of feel like you could shine light on it. I mean, for some of you, you might be a truth teller in some way, and that could be what's going on as well, too. But this is to start to understand that that you are meant to shine and, and find the people that recognize you, not the people that you have to be so careful what you say around. So let's have a look at what energies or guides you might meet on this journey to help you get to that, to get to this, because I do think there's a good guide, whether it's a literal person or a spirit guide, there's definitely something like that, but it is to unlock your own personal contribution and your own wisdom. I do think for many of you, this has some sort of business or material sort of aspect to it this is sort of definitely saying that you're meant not to be on your own and you're meant to have a kind of a very material idea about what you want to do so i think a lot of you this is around work or or a business or some sort of material idea this is saying that you will find good people good people to connect with people who understand you and people that take you out of this conflict so it's the grief is letting go of, I think, something that didn't work, somewhere where you didn't belong, to take you to belonging. 
to not feel that you have to do it all on your own, but also nevertheless to still feel that you have this unique contribution. The page of stars here feels to me like what's your almost your value proposition, your business plan. So I think you will find friends. This is saying you will find friends, whether it's friends on a kind of meditative level in a, in a journey, a dream time journey, or whether it's literally, I think it's probably a bit of both, that take you out of this sort of sense that everything is a battle. And that's when you'll know, that's when you'll know you're coming out of that into the, into the wisdom, your own wisdom and the wisdom of others combining. So let's see what Spirit's advice is around making the most of this journey. Spirit is saying everything doesn't have to be harmonious all the time and everything doesn't have to be in balance all the time. And you can take something from, from grief and from things that haven't worked out to liberate you. This is definitely about liberation. This is saying that the first step of this is liberation, but you have to accept that some things won't have worked out and things, some things weren't harmonious. It's only in acknowledging that. So if this was around a relationship where you were expected to be a particular way and only speak a particular way, then you have to accept that relationship is imbalanced so that you can let it go, so that you can take the leap into the new and stop this sort of like mental tension. If it's in a workplace, it may be having to accept this workplace is not your long-term workplace. doesn't mean you literally have to jump out of it immediately, but you have to go through that realisation. So I think there is a bit of pain associated with this. I think there is a bit of regret about not fitting into something or something not being right that you really want it to be right but that will allow you then to understand what is unique about you this it was not wasted time but it is part of a journey okay so let's do the journey let's see it from the creative beginning to end oh i'm sorry about that i'll just pause the video to bring that all up together again okay with the magic of video we're a little bit back in order i don't think those sort of things are accidental i think that's partly Spirit is very keen for you to start to, to do this, to be on this creative journey and to just leap in on that level to it, you know, to be like the fool here and be prepared to just embrace the journey. So let's look at the beginning point, the creative energy around the beginning point of this journey for you. Communication. So I think that, that the communication works on a number of levels, I think, for the, for the situation that we're looking at here. I think part of it is really listening to what's being said around you. There is going to be some wise counsel. There is also going to be where you see things are out of balance. It's like using your communication skills that are very powerful. That's part probably of what you're going to have to offer. As I said, you may be a truth teller or something like that. Communication is part of your creative ability, but it's also how you can start to, to clear out the energy from here. It may be even getting therapeutic help potentially if the grief is particularly strong or particularly hard to separate from. It's communicating with the right people, but I think, it's, as I say, it's also your communication ability. Let's have a look at some creative energy around it for you. So firstly, we have stillness. Quiet spaces, rhythmic breath, conscious silence. That, that's definitely saying meditation, getting into your grief, getting into that to let that go. That's that first step of the journey is very important. And you may have to communicate to people that they need to just leave you alone for a while while you do this. Then empathy. Loving kindness, behold your heart, self-understanding. Some of, some of your communication, some of what your unique contribution is going to be that you are very empathic. It's probably the thing that's caught you and trapped you to start with. It's the thing that will also help to release you as well. And you, you won't lose your heart and you won't be harsh in what you do. But, but you do need to get some boundaries when you're empathic because otherwise people can kind of hold you in, in situations that aren't right because you feel for them. Let's see some magic to therefore help you. Protection. Okay, I think this is saying that there will be protection around you. And when we get to the point of this reading where we're looking at guides, it may well be that there's a particular protective energy that they bring. I also think it's the protection of whoever it is that's a wise counsel around you. And duties. So this is about working out what is your what is your role, what is your duty, and what isn't it as well. I think when you see this in, in, a, in a journey like this, it's really getting to the core of what that actually is and not to be taking up other people's stuff. Let's get you some ancient wisdom to support you. Uh, 
Ah, Mahaka Michael, the Archangel Michael. So if there is a battle to be had, Michael is with you. I also think Michael is providing you protection very directly. And this is to connect you back to God and to your purpose and to your role. But I do think that it is saying that that there is there is something where you maybe were in a battle. Maybe this is part of it, that whatever relationship, career, whatever it is, this is a protection for you. Uh, and a strength for you and to know your own strength with Michael and Maha see Azrael you definitely have protection so Azrael in particular and in this deck is is there around life and death transitions transformation so there's a dual message in this for anybody where the grief is about the loss of someone then this is Azrael sending you the message that they are at peace that all is well with them that that this is just part of the process and so forth and that there is something from this that you are taking and will will replenish the world in some way replenish your world all of those sort of things it's also saying to you that you have far more options and possibilities than you are possibly giving yourself credit for and by letting yourself go through the grief of something that didn't work out, if that's what it is, and then listening to the council to work out what you really are here for, you're going to start to really see that. I want to get you a couple of power places in the world because the dream time is limitless. It's not just in Australia. So this is just to sort of see some energies and, and potentially places that are, could call to you or be important to you very literally, but they might just also be part of a kind of a symbolic energy around this coming into who you are and your purpose and finding, you know, your, your place. Ah, my favourite place, okay. And Wollombin, Mount Warning. So that's Australia. So it is connecting to Australia here. I mean, you don't have to be in Australia, but some of you may be or may have a, a yearning to come here. The interesting thing about both of these, though, is it about you creating you, which is what this is about. What is your unique thing? My favourite place is the place that you most love. It's like it's it's getting back to the core of that. Where do you feel most accepted, most yourself, most joyful? That is part of this recovery process. I think it's almost if you could get into the stillness meditatively around that place, that would be very powerful. But Wollombin, Mount Mourning in Australia, is about creating your own destiny and opportunities. And it is saying, I am humbly eternal. So this is picking up this energy. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to sort of be the president of the United States. You know, that's not necessary. I mean, maybe some people do, but you, you don't necessarily have to, unless that's something that you were driven to do. I'm not saying don't do it if it's something you want to do. But, but it's like you will have your intrinsic place and you have real value. And this is about finding that and the community and connections to make that happen. Let's see what wildlife guides from Australia you have. So you've already got two pretty heavy hitting archangels, which is why we're seeing the protection. But let's also see what wildlife guides can support you to, to come out of the grief and the letting go, to get the wise counsel and to really find your place and what you can contribute that is uniquely yours. So we have Blue ring octopus, boundaries. Yeah, so this is about finding the boundaries. There is something about this process of grief, letting go, that is necessary. There is something about coming away from an environment or a situation where you felt you couldn't speak. So blue ringed octopus will help you with that. We also have cassowary, individuality. Yeah, to become who you are. The intrinsic, perfect thing that you bring that nobody else can bring, part three. Okay. So let's also get some stars to guide you some astrology as well. Twelfth house, escape. Yeah, this is this is partly going within, going into the growth, um, uh, the grief, the sorry time, all of that kind of thing. It's also saying very psychically connected, connecting to these energies and so forth. But there's sort of something very deep here that needs to be healed. And then there's something very deep that needs to be born. And I think the 12th house looks over that. It's major sort of transformations on that sort of level. And your destiny. Yeah, because you have a destiny. And your destiny is connected to who you intrinsically are. Like you've been in a situation where you couldn't do that destiny because you were meant to be like others or something. It's something like that. But, but you finding what your intrinsic thing is is part of your destiny they say character is destiny that's part of it but i do think for you there is something about a very unique contribution that you can bring to things okay so let's 
close out the circle of the journey with another creative soul mandala card just to see the creative energy at the end you've communicated all of this you've drawn in your protection and your guides you've got a sense of what your destiny is what's the creative energy at the end of the journey curiosity yeah you're, you're woken up you're woken up to all that you could be and all that you could do you're not limited anymore so it's very very beautiful energy so to finish off the reading, I'm just going to draw a card from the, one, the Wisdom of the Wandering Moon Oracle, which is the companion oracle to the tarot deck that I was using, just to sort of a final sort of code or a final, final outcome to consider as part of this journey. Grounded. Once you've been through this process and you've found your destiny, you can be grounded and you have somewhere where you can stay. See, there's something about moving on. There's something about letting go. But it's also to find the place where you can be grounded, where you can set your anchor down, where you are at home, at home in yourself and at home with your people. So it's a really beautiful energy, Pole 3. I hope that you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share about it in the comments, I'd love to hear. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome to your reading pile four. So these cards are from the Aboriginal Dreamtime Oracle and these are from the Aboriginal Wisdom Oracle to sort of be kind of like feelings, emotions, sensations that kind of connect to this journey. This journey is interesting. It's a journey of maturation. It's a journey of coming into who you are and probably committing to certain things and also to finding people that you can commit and connect with and balancing like two two positive but nevertheless kind of opposite sort of forces on one side the sort of force of being able to be impulsive when necessary and and optimistic and all of those sort of things because you're sort of being a little bit cautious and solemn at the moment with with the need also to see something through to find your people to to mature into something so this doesn't mean the people that have come here are immature this, that's not what i'm saying but there is a kind of a, a sense now to choose a direction and something to stick to and to take your kind of wilder energies and skills and so forth into that to create something I think that goes forward and to feel confident to do it to feel ready to do it the reason I say that is firstly looking at the dream time cards this first this first card is about a serpent that lives and burrows under the earth and sometimes the animals get a little bit worried about the serpent because it's it's sort of like movement and where it sets up home from time to time and everything changes the environment so it makes it difficult sometimes for them to to adapt but this is all about adaptability because it tells a story of one time where it disturbed a certain water a sort of area of water and some fish were suddenly on land and thought they were going to die but found that they could actually breathe and burrow under and became lung fish so they could adapt and work the way back to their water and so forth so this is all about understanding adaptability and and seeing something through seeing the whole cycle through and understanding what the benefit of that is so i do think that some of you that have come here maybe you know, maybe you find it hard to settle to a job or you find it hard to find your life purpose or you're not even really sure about whether you can do things differently so you just sort of like tend to sort of stay at a particular level you're not moving forward there's something about understanding flexibility adaptability and the long game playing the long game finding the right people understanding here is about a particular dingo that was much smaller or felt much smaller than the rest of her her pack and was uh, attacked you know bullied and so forth so some of you may have been bullied or some of you may have been made to feel lesser than and she leaves her pack and is alone for a long time and when she sees another dingo she's a little bit worried about whether she's going to be bullied again though eventually when she's hurt that dingo helps her so it's about understanding literally that that if you have found yourself under attack if you have found your your circumstances sort of uprooted by other forces and and felt like that that you can still adapt and flow with that and find the place where you take this as a growth opportunity and you find your right people because with men's business and this doesn't mean 
you have to be male. But this is about the sort of tribal learning within the First Nations. And, and it tells the story of a son who is separated from his mob and eventually, having learnt to look after himself, finds his way back to his mob. And they're very proud of him for being able to do that. So it's, it's an interesting journey here, I think, about shifting yourself out of your comfort zone in some way so that you can adapt. But on the other hand, in doing it, saying, I'm going to stick with something. I'm going to see it through. I'm going to take the risk to connect with the right people. I'm going to learn for myself how to exist and so forth so that I move from being worried to being optimistic. So there's very much an energy here about moving out of, of a kind of a boxed in sort of sense to come into your mature full self to find the right allies that you would have and so forth. But it's all about flexibility and continuity. It's finding the balance with those two things. It's really interesting too that, that when I looked at this, as I say, this is sort of like moving away from timidity, moving away from caution, moving away from solemn to get a good balance of impulse, recklessness and optimism. It's But it's both because this does definitely say you need to be able to see certain things through and so forth. And it is a mature approach. It's not just kind of throwing away your toys and going and playing in the next game. And, I, and I, I'm not saying that anybody here is immature. I'm just saying that it's there is something. There is going to be an opportunity now where you could be flexible about what you do, find a different set of the right sort of people and see something through to show how much you have grown and understood. But when I looked at these and I laid this out and I saw reckless here, there's actually an Australian song by Australian Crawl called Reckless. It's really beautiful. I'm not going to try and sing it here because of you know, copyright sort of, you know, IP sort of things. But but there is almost, a, it, it really resonates to me with this energy. So if you, you know, if you're interested, check it out. It's a beautiful song, but it is kind of about, I guess, you know, getting that balance right. It's 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 got this feeling to it. And, and yeah, it's not being too reckless, but equally uh, also sort of having that sense of continuity and belonging and so forth. It's a very, very beautiful song. So I very much recommend it <laughs> if, if you're interested. But beyond that, as I say, I feel like this is about you coming into some sort of new mature way of doing things, a, a job that is the right one for you that you're really happy with. But it's it's called it's it's done by a shift. It's almost like if it's around a job, it could be that the disturbance was that you lost a job or that your industry was really you know, becoming contracted. And it forces you to think differently about other connections and networks that brings you into understanding who you could be and what else you could be. If it's around a relationship, it could have been that you tended to have sort of similar sort of relationships, but never see them through. You find the right person and that takes you to that point where you can be part of a community. So it just sort of depends on how this is playing out. But that's the that's the energy of the journey. So let's have a look and see with Tarot a little bit more about what you're meant to uncover on this dream time journey. It's really interesting. There's now three three of these readings that has had the two of wands reverse come out. It's, it was in the same spot in two of them, and it's a different spot here, but it's still in the same row. I do think that a lot of this energy that is being processed through these dream time journeys is around finding how to to rise above competition and to find your own your own way of defining who you want to be in the world. You know, with the two of wands reverse, there's a kind of a sense of push-pull energy there and possibly with other people. This could be the thing that triggers all of this, as I say, that the serpent here could be another person competing with you that is forcing you to adapt in some way. The good thing, however, is that there is there is a really good outcome for you. You are moving into this sort of sense of balance and the wheel of fortune is moving in your direction, just like the dingo here found the dingo that wasn't going to to ridicule her. You know, that there's that sort of energy. You're moving into that. You're meant to sort of see that. And coming out of the sort of feeling of emotionally being stuck and unhappy. But you do need to then settle for a while. And with the wanderer reverse, it's like you don't, you, you're not going into, this is not about just something else that you kind of like have a bit of a time looking at and thinking that's interesting and then move on to something else. There is something about settling. There is something about 
stepping into your destiny. There is something about that 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 is required and it is a little bit of a shift for your nature because your nature tends to like to not commit to things because you're a bit cautious about it not really sure about the outcomes so there's something it's a really good opportunity i think in whatever way it is good relationship good career move whatever it might be it's very very good but you are going to have to adapt a bit for it and you are going to have to commit to it so let's have a look at what energies or guides can help you we're taking advantage of this opportunity that I think is coming through and giving you the confidence to do it. Okay, there's something here about learning. Some of you, it might be that you take on some academic study or some sort of like higher learning in some way or, or learn a new craft or something like that. There's definitely something about learning and something about being really pragmatic about this, that it, it's going to take a bit of time and it's worth doing and not to be kind of mentally always looking for the next thing. There is a person. So whether it's sort of like this, the dingo that, that, that befriended the dingo there, but there is a person, it's coming up as the king of swords. Person or a guide, it could be a guide. If it's a guide, it's probably an archangel, I would think. But if it's a person, I think it's someone who's very clever. Like some of this might be in the law in some way with justice and the king of swords. For some of you, it may be, you know, like studying the law or working in the law or on things that are legal or something like that or political. But but beyond that, it's a wise person. So it feels like the, the sort of parental line there, sort of like bringing you into this maturation, like bringing you to this next level, whatever it is. And it's it's wise counsel, basically. And they, they kind of like, if you try and push back, they, they're very good at deflecting that. And sort of getting you back on what you can learn and, and how to sort of be pragmatic about this. You know, so they're very they're like a really great coach or mentor potentially. If you don't have a coach or mentor and you're looking to sort of move up the ladder, it might be suggesting that would be a good thing to, to seek out. I know that that costs money, but sometimes organizations will pay for coaching and mentoring too. So it just might be worth thinking about that if that resonates. Let's ask Spirit's advice about how to make the most of this journey. Okay, so this is saying that, that it's interesting. It's saying that the, the purpose of all of this, the adaptability, the, the sort of finding your way in the wilderness, your finding of your people, it's not initially about you know following your heart. There's something quite pragmatic about this energy. It's almost like a test. And it's not also your long-term thing, though it's something that you're required to see through, but it's not your long-term thing. It's, it's like a rite of passage. But, you know, it could be a job that you're meant to do for a year. It could be a relationship that's meant to be in place for a couple of years while you create something together. It's not necessarily your long-term thing, but it will help you understand what that is and who you would be as an independent person. It feels like it's a collaboration that leads you towards more independence once you really understand who you are and you move out of those kind of more kind of suppressed energies and so forth. But it doesn't have to be... It's, it's sort of saying that if at the moment, you know, like why you kind of find it hard to settle is you're trying to find the thing that your heart loves. That's not this stage of the journey. You'll get there, but that's not this stage of the journey. This is meant to, to take you through a process of seeing something from the beginning to the end, adapting within it so that you know that you can always survive, that you are always going to be okay, that you can take risks, you can do any of those things. Then you can focus on that. But it's like you've... you've made yourself cautious and timid and, and, and closed in by by not seeing things through by feeling that it's not you know it's not close to your heart it's not this it's not that and you know will i fit in you know etc but you are you are already far more mature and far more flexible than you're giving yourself credit for once you actually start doing that then you will go through this you will do whatever this thing is and that will show you you can do anything that's that's what this is meant to be showing you so let's take you through the journey. Let's start firstly with the creative energy at the beginning of the journey. We'll also close out with a card from the same deck at the end of the journey. But let's see the creative energy that is underpinning this, this dream time journey, this advice from spirit. The unknown. Yeah, when the lungfish suddenly found themselves having to, to somehow survive in sort of very unknown territory, that's what triggered the, the, the real understanding of, of who 
they were and what they could do and so forth. So there's something about being prepared to go into the unknown. Let's look at some creative supports for you going into that kind of journey. We have empathy. Loving kindness, behold your heart, self-understanding. This is about being empathic with yourself. It may feel like the opposite. It may feel like you're having to put your heart on hold, as I say, but it's understanding that. It's understanding that this is part of a maturation process. This is part of taking you to another level. And as I keep saying, this doesn't mean you're not mature. It's just we always mature. We always mature with different things. There's more and more as a greater degree of skill that we get, a greater degree of responsibility we take on. There's something there. So you will be able to have the empathy with yourself and with others going through this. We also have touch. Mindful touch, sensual pleasure, engage feeling sense. That may be saying that if you are feeling, feeling like, you know, kind of this isn't in your heart, then maybe the thing is to reach out to those who are so that you kind of have that sense of connection and, 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 and touch and you get that sort of energy in a different way. Let's see some magic for you. Protection. That one came up in that spot for at least one other reading and I, and I said with the king of swords that might be archangel energy around you so I think you're highly protected during this you don't need to worry that you're that you're going to sort of go astray or not be up to it and breathe yeah just allow yourself to breathe <laughs> the lungfish breathe that's what they did by breathing into this change understanding it and then like seeing it through going through the whole cycle they found that they could adapt and they found they could also get back to their water as well so there is something about relaxing into this process and seeing it through it feels like an exercise program and you're halfway through it and you're thinking oh god i could just stop now i feel that quite often when i'm exercising <laughs> but there's also a sense of breathe into it and just move on see it through that there is a purpose to this okay let's see some spiritual support for you going through the journey who is responsible? Okay, this is about maturation on that level. This is the question. Who is responsible? What are you responsible for? What are other people responsible for? There is a question in all this about your place in the world, about what you can bring to the world and what it would ultimately be to be independent. You're ultimately responsible for yourself. But connecting in with the empathy, you know, what, what do you bring to others as well? And... Yellow, the sun rising and setting. So you are going to get to this, even if you feel like at the moment, you know, this isn't quite your life path. It is going to happen and it's a cycle. Sun rising and setting, the sun rises and sets. It goes through the whole process. You will learn this about yourself by seeing whatever this is through. That's the point. Let's see some power places for you. So the dream time is broader than just Australia. So I just wanted to use a deck that has powerful places spiritually in the world. These may be places that draw to you, maybe places you visited. They may just be places that are emblematic of the energy of this journey. We have Wollombin, which is Australian, Mount Morning, and Delphi. Wow. So Wollombin... Mount Warning, the energy here is about creating your own destiny. So this is about this is about you creating your own independence ultimately. Though through the the pathway of seeing something through that I think is not your long term thing, but which still needs to be seen through. So I think this gives you some energy around being able to create yourself. And as it says, I am humbly eternal, understanding that that there is a a give and take energy there and i think with delphi greece that's the oracle of delphi it's the wisdom the wisdom to do that to understand what it is that you're trying to do there why this is a part of the passage the rite of passage that you need to go through it talks about i receive divine messages constantly and clearly i look for the truth in any situation i know myself power comes from the inside out this is about you discovering something about yourself, about your capacity to see things through and what that means, how it liberates you ultimately. So let's get you some wild animals from Australia as guides as well on this journey. Sorry, if that sounded a bit strange, I just had to answer the door. 
back again now though. So as I said, let's have a look at some wild Australian animal guides for you on this journey as well, Pile 4. We have Possum, the trickster. This might be, Possum may be here to just kind of make things a bit fun and to mix things up a bit because when we are, as I say, I have this sort of sense almost of doing a marathon and an exercise program or something like that. This, I think this may be here just to kind of mix it up a bit, make you sort of feel the fun of it so that you can sort of see it through. There also might be that King of Swords might sometimes play kind of gentle, positive mind games with you as well too to kind of change your perspective a bit. And we also get Kingfisher dive deep so kingfisher will allow you to sort of go within and really understand this you know and particularly when you're sort of feeling a bit frustrated which i think you will on occasion with this as you go through the process kingfisher will help you dive deep remember what it's about you know help you to kind of have that sense and, and energy to see it through let's also see what the stars give you what astrology what guidance of the stars there is for you on the journey Sixth house routine. Yeah, I think a lot of this is about work. I'd be surprised. I mean, it could be just service to others in some other way as well. But I think for most of you, this is about work and it is about seeing something through. It, it feels very much like you take on a job and you do it for a year or two. Or you take on a contract and you see it from the beginning to the end, even if the contract's only six months. It's not really about the time. It's about the, the I'm going to see this through. I'm going to get what I want from it. I'm going to know once I've done this, I can do whatever I want. I really want to do I can do anything but it is building it into your day-to-day -day in some way like an exercise routine again that's it's a similar thing and of course the sixth house is also about health I mean for some people this might be about exercise it might be about getting into a more healthy lifestyle potentially and then we also have your destiny because there's something you're meant to be doing it, this is not the end this is a rite of passage for the end and if you understand that, because it's about coming into that maturation of really knowing what you can do and not, not sort of underestimating your ability anymore, because I think you probably did. I think that's why you kind of don't settle to things. Okay, so let's get another creative mandala card to see the sort of creative end of the journey. If that's the alpha, what's the omega? Mind. Yeah, it's a state of mind. And it's strength of mind. And this is why the King of Swords was such a powerful guide for you. Your mind will do this. Your mind will give you the discipline. It's actually something a bit Saturnian about it. It's about, as I say, time, dealing with time, dealing with responsibility. And then strength, the strength and structure that comes out of that, the clarity of mind. So we're going to just finish with a card from the Wisdom of the Wandering Moon Oracle for a last message around this journey, this dream time journey for you, Paul Paul liberation see this is the thing i think that there's a combination of things this is showing has been happening for you one is that that when you have kind of been doing things seeing it through felt a bit constrained it felt like you were giving up your individuality it was giving up your freedom in some way and and also it was a combination of that and maybe not being sure you know can i see it through do i have the skills or whatever by doing this, by in a sense quite consciously and, and willingly committing to something for a period of time, proving what you can do, seeing what there is in the people that you can connect with, you ultimately liberate yourself. You take yourself to that nine of pentacles type of energy, which is being the self-made person, the person who really is able to then do what they want to do and with confidence no longer being unsure of the environment, no, no longer being sure about whether you're flexible enough, not, no longer being sure about whether you can find your people or whether you have the skills. All of those things are going to be answered by what this is. And it's just something that you do. As I say, it could be an exercise program if this is about feeling healthy, so the liberation of health. If it's a relationship, it's seeing the relationship through and whatever that sense is because that ultimately frees you to know that you're adaptable and flexible and skillful enough for any relationship that you want to have. If it's career, and I think for many of you it might be career, it's a, a step in the job that is taking you towards your destiny and it's meant to happen to show you that you're able to do it. 
So I hope that this resonates for you, Paul. It's a very specific sort of message, I think. I hope that it was helpful and that you enjoyed it. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. But beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings.